ragweed is the devil's lettuce. Now, I know that term is usually reserved for another plant, but for me, it's ragweed. I absolutely hate it. Well, I don't hate it. It's my sinuses. In late summer and into the fall, ragweed plants release pollen into the air, causing about 23 million Americans to have symptoms from an allergy to the pollen. According to the Asthma and Allergy Foundation of America, it's reported that one out of five people react to ragweed pollen. I'm one of the five apparently, but my allergies are a little less severe than those of some others, so that's a plus. I often get sinus pressure, stuffiness, and sometimes a sore throat, whereas many people with allergies suffer from those symptoms as well as watery eyes, runny nose, and itchiness. Be aware that mold spores and dust mites can be bad in autumn as well. Although goldenrod often gets some blame for allergy issues, it does not cause hay fever. I repeat, goldenrod does not trigger seasonal allergies. The pollen produced by goldenrod is thick and heavy, therefore it is not carried by the wind. It must be spread by insects. Ragweed pollen, on the other hand, is very light in weight and depends on the wind to spread it around. And each plant can release up to 1 billion pollen grains into the air, according to experts. 1 billion the first frost of the year will substantially reduce ragweed pollen, but the pollen sometimes lingers until December in some parts of the country. But just know that mid-September is peak ragweed season, so hopefully the days of very high pollen counts are over until spring. Ragweed is in the family Ambrosia. Yes, as in Greek mythology where Ambrosia was considered the food or drink of the Olympian gods, and it was thought to bring long life and immortality to those who consumed it. That doesn't sound right at all to me. Ragweed is the devil's lettuce. The devil's lettuce, I tell you, there are many different species of ragweed around the country. The three most common being giant ragweed, common ragweed, and western ragweed. I would venture to guess that while common ragweed is very common indeed, people have probably seen giant ragweed the most. Giant ragweed, also known as great ragweed and tall ragweed, in certain situations can grow up to 20 feet in height. However, most plants are in the 6 to 8 feet range. They have palmate leaves, which means their shape resembles that of the palm of a hand and its fingers. However, the leaves near the top of the plant are elliptical. They have long, thin flower spikes, which are similar in appearance to common and western ragweed. Common ragweed is less noticeable and is more shrubby, growing to about 2.5 feet tall. It is the worst for seasonal allergy sufferers around mid to late August. Common ragweed has leaves which are more dissected than those of western ragweed, and its stems are more reddish in color. Western ragweed grows up to 6 feet in height, but most plants are shorter, below 3 feet. It is a perennial, whereas the previous two species are annuals. Notice how the stems are all green. Not really any reddish on it like there is on the common. Ragweed can be found over much of the United States. It can grow just about everywhere. Well, sort of. Ragweed tends to be more prevalent where soil has been disturbed by human activity. Go figure, it follows us. Western ragweed typically grows on disturbed sites, dry rangelands, and hillsides. Common ragweed and giant ragweed usually grow along roadsides, riverbanks, vacant lots and fields near streams and water, and where farming or chemicals upset the soil, such as salting roads in the winter. Symptoms of seasonal allergies include itchy, watery eyes, sneezing, runny, stuffy, or itchy nose, temporary loss of smell, headache and fatigue, dark circles under the eyes, also known as allergic shiners, drainage from the nose to the back of the throat, post-nasal drip, sore throat or coughing, and snoring. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe. Thank you. And here are some more facts about ragweed and its pollen.